This is Vanessa. Welcome to Asia News. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations opened its 36 summit highlights focusing on COVID-19 response post-pandemic recovery. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations opened its 36th summit, which is chaired by Vietnam via video conference, focusing on COVID-19 response, post-pandemic recovery and further cooperation with partners. Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Xuan Puc said that, due to the unprecedented challenges brought by the COVID-19 pandemic, together with the continuous progress of science and technology, the format of the summit has also changed. According to the Vietnamese Prime Minister, the ASEAN leaders discuss the region's comprehensive post-pandemic recovery plans, implement initiatives, including establishing the ASEAN COVID-19 Response Fund, setting up a reserve for medical supplies, and building the ASEAN standard procedures of epidemic response in case of health emergency. The participating countries successfully reach a high degree of consensus at this summit to jointly build a secure, united and interconnected ASEAN region, especially to strengthen the control of COVID-19 pandemic, to suppress the second outbreak of the pandemic and to develop the social economy together so that countries can recover their economic development after the pandemic outbreak. <laughs> ASEAN established in 1967. The countries that are part of the ASEAN are Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. China International Import Expo Vital Platform for Economic Cooperation. An official with the Cambodian Rural Development Agency said, the third China International Import Expo, scheduled to be held in November, is a vital platform that can create more opportunities in trade and investment between China and Cambodia. Ruin Sovaranit, chairman of the Cambodian Rural Development Agency, said, As China and Cambodia are good partners in economic field, the China International Import Expo can work as a messenger to provide more economic development projects and policies to businessmen, traders and investors from the two countries. The COVID-19, the... Uh, COVID-19 is also affect a lot of uh, global uh, and also the regional uh, economy. So for the prospect of the China economic marketing uh, market and also the bilateral uh, tie between the Cambodia, we can uh, we can say that the Cambodia uh, and also the China is a long history then we have a very strong relation between the government and government. Particularly, the CIIE is also the messenger who can bring all this matter to the top government, which is engage the businessmen, trader, investor involved more economic development, uh, project development policy, particular financial issue such as a policy and government partnership between the private sector to support investments. He said that the China International Import Expo is also a platform that can connect enterprises from the two countries to exchange business ideas. Uh, we have a lot of experience according to this uh, set up the platforms. Actually, the platform can bring all the, between the government institution and also the private sectors come together. And we have a lot of the experience and share some of the, some of the what we call uh, the trading platform and connecting between the uh, Cambodian business and, and Chinese business too. The China International Import Expo is the first dedicated import exhibition in the world and has seen fruitful outcomes in the past two expos. Thailand and Philippine scholars said foreign countries have no right to intervene in Hong Kong affairs. The national security legislation for the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region helps the region restore peace and stability and should not be intervened by any foreign country as it is China's internal affair, commented by scholars from Thailand and Philippines. Bokin Balakula, president of Thailand-China Culture and Economy Association, said the national security legislation for Hong Kong Special Administrative Region will help Hong Kong restore long-term stability and prosperity and pointed out that some countries have completely double standards when it comes to Hong Kong issues. I think that the 
I think the whole world has a consensus that Hong Kong is an unreliable part of China. When Hong Kong's stability is affected, it is natural for China to be concerned and take action to safeguard social stability. Many countries have also expressed that the legislation on safeguarding national security in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region has a positive impact. In a word, law on safeguarding national security in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region is conducive to Hong Kong's long-term stability and prosperity. And when the Americans accuse of this, they do double standard for everything. I think not only double standards, there's no standards for them. Medardo Bombita, a professor from the Department of Political Science of the University of Rizal System, also expressed his support for China's national security legislation in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, saying that the Chinese government has every right to safeguard its state sovereignty, which should not be intervened by foreign forces. The uh, national security law is an opportunity uh, for the Hong Kong people to return to a peaceful society. Uh, we could see that the the yeah, Chinese government only intends uh, to protect itself from, from terroristic activities, from secession, from subversion, and even uh, the, uh, the uh, so-called collusion to external forces. Uh, the double standard of uh, imposing uh, to other states by, 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 by world powers, if they, they claim to be world powers, is very unjustifiable. You fix first your internal affairs before criticizing or giving uh, opinion against other countries' affairs. Indonesian teachers to bring offline class to village students amid pandemic curbs. Teacher in Rikusuroto knew he could not rely on hosting online lessons for pupils living in remote areas, lacking internet access or even a phone signal. When the coronavirus pandemic forced his schools on Indonesia's Java Island to shut, instead, to ensure they could keep studying, the 57-year-old elementary school teacher has had to go to them, spending about six hours a day on a motorbike and by foot to reach a handful of remote locations in the hilly Magelang area of central Java. I'm a teacher and it is my responsibility to do this. I must accompany and teach my students. If the students have no internet access, then how can they learn? So I need to get to my students. Students say they welcome the face-to-face -face meetings with Suroto, who wears a mask and maintains social distancing for lessons. <laughs> Studying at home sometimes can be difficult, sometimes easy. But if Mr. Suroto is here, all subjects become easy. <laughs> students' parents say in the rural districts where he works, many of the households are not set up to use technology, as is the case in large parts of the sprawling archipelago. Well, I do not know what the internet is, nor other sophisticated devices that are often used nowadays. Indonesia has around 60 million households, but only one in six had an internet connection in mid-2019, according to the Association of Internet Service Providers Indonesia. Myanmar bus launches private boat seats to discourage virus spread. Bus travel in Myanmar has gone from cramped seats to first-class private pod sitting, thanks to the coronavirus outbreak. As a social distancing measures, a local bus operator, JJ Express, has introduced cubicles in dozens of its buses where long-distance travelers sit with minimized contagion risk behind closed aluminum doors. The pods have cut the number of passengers the bus can carry from 33 to 17, but the ticket price is only higher by 20% at US dollar 20. JJ Express hope that the safety measure will pay off in the long run and it's testing demand to see how many more of its fleet of 50 buses it should convert. The cubicles have eased passengers fears. We didn't dare travel during COVID-19. We didn't feel safe when two people sat close to each other on the twin seat. Now we feel safer sitting in this private chamber. It's much more comfortable. I appreciate that the bus company is being cautious against the COVID-19. People are encouraged to strictly observe social distance measures. I am thankful for JJ Express for providing this service to us with the proper chambers as we are so concerned of physical contact during this virus outbreak. We feel safe to travel in it. Myanmar has reported 286 confirmed cases with 23 new cases on Friday, June 19. 
the country remains under public gathering restrictions in pagodas, mosques and churches until June 30. Myanmar government and ethnic armed groups held meeting to restart peace talks. The Myanmar government and ethnic armed groups that signed the nationwide ceasefire agreement held a meeting in last week and restarted the country's peace process. The meeting, held in the country's larger city of Yangon, was attended by nine government delegates and 14 delegates from the ethnic armed groups. After three days of close consultation, the attending parties have reached initial consensus on the roadmap and timetable for continuing the peace process in the coming months. It is expected that the restart of the peace process will pave the way for more ethnic armed groups to sign the nation's ceasefire agreement. President Xi says China is ready to strengthen anti-pandemic cooperation with Laos. The General Secretary of Communist Party of China Central Committee and Chinese President Xi Jinping said China is ready to strengthen cooperation with Laos in fighting the COVID-19 epidemic. In a verbal message sent to Bunhang Vorachit, General Secretary of the Lao People's Revolutionary Party, Central Committee, and President of Laos, she said he believes that with joint efforts of China and Laos, as well as the international community, a final victory will surely be achieved in the battle against the pandemic. Expressing his pleasure to receive a warm and friendly letter from Bunhang, she said he is deeply gratified to know that Chinese assistance has played a positive role in Laos' fights against the coronavirus disease. In a letter of gratitude sent to Xi earlier on China's support for Laos' fight against COVID-19, Bunghan noted that the Communist Party of China and the Chinese government, at the request of the Laos and under Xi's instructions, swiftly sent a team of medical experts to Laos and have provided a large amount of anti-epidemic supplies and therapeutic drugs in order to help Laos contain the virus outbreak and treat the patients. He wished the borderly Chinese people continuous and greater successes in advancing the cause of building socialism with Chinese characteristics and realizing Chinese two centenary goals under the strong leadership of the Communist Party of China Central Committee, which he adds its core. He also expressed his hope that the traditional Laos-China friendship, the long-standing stable Laos-China comprehensive strategic partnership of cooperation and the building of the Laos-China community with shared future will continue to flourish and bring more tangible benefits to both peoples. Singaporean lab found antibodies that could be used in coronavirus treatment. Singaporean's National Defense Research Organization said that it found five antibodies that can neutralize COVID-19, potentially paving the way for them to be used in a virus treatment after the completion of clinical trials. DSO National Laboratory says, pending approval, human trials for the lead antibody are expected to begin within months. The organization said it found the antibodies of the blood samples from recovered coronavirus patients. Since March, it has screened hundreds of thousands of cells to find the antibodies using a proprietary screening technique. In a news release, the lab's director said giving patients an antibody could help them fight and prevent infections and allow them to recover more quickly. Singapore sets up COVID-19 testing centers to curb the spread of coronavirus. The Singaporean government has set up COVID-19 testing centers in different regions of the country to meet the increased testing needs and curb the spread of the coronavirus by identifying infected patients as early as possible. Singapore has expanded the testing scale and set up four COVID-19 testing centers in the country so far. A testing center in Marina Bay, people are lining up for the scheduled swab test. A testing center is divided into three areas, namely temperature area, registration area and testing area. People are required to follow the procedures for taking the tests. Singapore has already completed the COVID-19 testing for nursing home residents and healthcare personnel, as well as staff at the preschool educational institutions. The country will then conduct the test on medical staff battling against the pandemic at the front line and patients diagnosed with acute respiratory infections on their first hospital visit. Thank you for today. We'll see you again.